This is the FL Sun S1 Pro. It's my first Delta printer to test out, and it is a very fast printer. But a lot more goes into a 3D printer than it being fast and having a good motion system. So today we're going to talk about all the features I really like about this 3D printer and some things it could still use and work on. This is a very large printer, but I do like the styling that they went with here. It's silver and black with a dark smoky glass here to hide the inside. These two sets of lights on each side really make it easy to see the inside, but those lights can be turned off from this large screen at the bottom. This is a very large, easy to use touch screen on the bottom, indicator lights over on the left, two full-size USB-A on the right, and an actual power button. That's something you don't see on most printers nowadays. It's easy to navigate around here on the menu, find which prints you want to start, change your settings, look up old videos, and you can fully watch back your time lapses right on the front of the printer. This is something you can't do on most 3D printers. It comes with all of the calibration here for motor calibration, bed leveling, vibration compensation. Delta printers have a really unique build volume. It's got a radius of 320 millimeters by a height in the middle of 430, but it only goes up to that 340 millimeters in the very center. It's got a max speed of 1200 millimeters per second and maximum acceleration of 40,000 millimeters per second squared. They claim the maximum flow rate to be 110 millimeters cubed per second, but that's a little bit optimistic. When testing out their high flow PLA, I maxed out the flow rate at around 68 to 69 millimeters cubed per second. But this is only testing one filament. I would just say 110 is a bit overly optimistic. Same thing with these speeds and accelerations. Those are your maximum and you're not going to be printing at those speeds and accelerations all the time. It was able to complete an 8 minute Vinci and it's a very good looking 8 minute Vinci. I think this is the fastest Vinci that I've ever printed and definitely the best sub 10 minute Vinci that I've ever tried. So very impressive speeds for quick prototyping. The extruder and hot end here are attached to three sets of carbon fiber arms. These are very lightweight and very rigid. These arms are connected up to rails and belts, which are controlled by closed loop stepper motors, those lights up at the top there. Since most motion uses all three motors all at the same time, the load is more evenly shared than in a normal Cartesian printer. So that's the theory behind why you're able to get such high speeds out of a Delta printer. One downside to these closed loop stepper motors is this ghostly noise you hear. Sometimes when sitting idle, it'll just make that sound. The filament storage on this printer is one of the more unique features of this printer. Behind this door is where it holds the spools. The filament feeds down through this small tube. In the middle is a rotating rod that it holds onto, and that's also the scale that measures the weight of the filament. So on the screen, you get a percentage of the filament that's left on the spool. I'm not sure what it thinks the weight of a standard spool is, and it's always gonna be a little bit different. Between a plastic spool or a cardboard spool, even different brands are going to weigh different amounts. But I guess they're all close enough to give you a rough estimate. Up in the top here is a little bit of desiccant to keep the filament dry, and it also has an active filament dryer built into this chamber. So on the printer's screen, it gives you a relative humidity percentage and the temperature inside that chamber. You can turn on the active filament dryer, set a temperature range, and even adjust the time. Turn it up to eight hours and it will dry for the next eight hours that this printer is on. Whether you're printing or not, it keeps this timer going. That's a really cool feature that's not on most other printers. On here, you can adjust things like your nozzle and heat bed temperature. You can turn on and off the cooling fan and adjust the percentage of that cooling fan. You can really make this printer a lot more quiet by turning the cooling fan down by just a few percentages. Down to 60 or 80% fan, it will be a lot quieter printer. The chamber cooling fan here does have a HEPA and carbon fiber filter on there, which is a really great thing to see, but the chamber cooling fan is only on or off. There's no way to adjust the amount that it's on. It would be really cool if this was tied to an actual temperature of the chamber, so you could keep the chamber at a correct temperature for PLA printing. But instead, it's either all or nothing, and the fan is kind of loud. Behind this panel, you can pull it out here. It's got activated carbon on one side, and the HEPA filter on the other side. Really simple and pretty easy to get to. This is something you will need to replace. 
as the activated carbon and HEPA filter does get filled with particles. This printer does come with a lot of capacitors to be a backup power supply unit. So when you turn it on, it does take a long time to boot up. And when you turn it off, it takes about 30 seconds for it to fully power down. This is so you can save a print if there is a short power outage. It notices that the power is out, moves, moves the print head up and away from the actual part. And then when it does restore power, the print is able to home at the top of the print volume and then go back down and continue printing. Since this does come with a PEI bed, if the print bed does cool off very much, you'll probably lose the print. I've just powered it off for a short time on this test print and I was able to successfully resume the print. Up on the top of the printer are two fan grills and this one on the back is the one that goes to the part cooling fan. I printed out this fan silencer and it really does decrease the noise if you just place it on top here. This other one is just for getting some airflow to cool the electronics. If we take off the panel here, we can see the internal electronics. Here's the part cooling fan over here and the tube that goes down to the hot end, a sort of power supply. A lot of this is written in Chinese, so I don't fully know what all these components are doing. This is some sort of power supply. Each of these motors is a closed loop stepper driver, so they do need these extra circuit boards on each motor. And then there would be more electronics down in the base of this printer. This is a replacement hot end that comes with the printer. And if we take off the nozzle here, we can see the unique solution they have for getting these high flow rates. That is sort of a CHT style cutout inside of this aluminum melt zone. It adds extra surface area so the printer can melt filament faster. Since that CHT cutout in there is made of aluminum, it's not recommended to use highly abrasive filaments with this printer. So it's not designed for carbon fiber filaments or glow in the dark filaments. Those will wear away this aluminum melt zone and degrade your performance of this printer. The nozzle does come with a hardened steel tip, so the prints will still look correct, but your melting performance would probably degrade if you use too much abrasive filament in this printer. This is a really cool solution for getting high flow rates. I do really like that it uses these normal style nozzles as well. So you can use so many replacement third party nozzles inside of this machine. Since this is a printer in 2025, of course it's going to have some AI features. The normal detection features are above this line. Filament detection, that's just your run out detection. Power off or zoom. That way you, it'll resume it if there's a power loss. I do like the clog feature. So if the filament isn't moving forward for any reason while it's printing, it'll let you know and stop the print. Everything below this line is the more experimental. Debris will let you know if there's objects on the printer that shouldn't be there. And spaghetti detection lets you know if the printer is printing some spaghetti. These were a little bit more finicky and didn't work reliably in my testing. I found it was easier to just leave them off. This printer is running Clipper as the firmware and in the slicer you get a full mainsail web page under the device tab. The FLSEN slicer is a reskinned version of Orca slicer and a lot of people really like this. And I kind of like that it is just using a web page version of mainsail as the device tab because this gives you so much control over the printer. You can go in and easily modify the printer config file and change things directly from here. It is their FL Sun version of Clipper, so it's not fully open to every firmware update that comes with Clipper. You do have to use FL Sun firmware updates, but I bet it would be pretty easy to get this onto the main branch of Clipper. Next up, we can talk about print quality. And the slicer has updated three times since I started testing this printer, so the newest prints look a lot better than the older prints. Another note about how I'm reviewing this, I'm using it as is without spending hours tuning in print profiles. Since most printers coming out now are ready to go out of the box, Bamboo, Creality, all the other brands are putting good profiles out. So that's why I'm reviewing this kind of stock as is with the default print profiles. And this printer is really competing with those brands. So you really would have to factor in how much is a day of effort to tune in a printer worth to you. I know some people will take issue with this style of review saying, why can't you just take the time to tune it in? I could, but I think that's an unfair comparison to compare it with printers that weren't great straight out of the box. These are some of the pre-sliced files and I think they turned out pretty good. This is our eight minute Benchy, really, quality for an eight, really good quality for an eight minute Benchy. Not the best quality Benchy I've ever printed, but the best sub 10 minute Benchy easily. Next up with, was this fan silencer, which is a really useful print and does decrease the noise coming off of that CPAP style fan. Next up is a Snorlax that they call Kitty. This low polygon look does have a lot of rounded edges, 
but you can see a bit of these surface skin artifacts that show up on this printer. Next up was this large scale dwarf, which I printed in this navy filament. I think this turned out really good. The, those surface imperfections don't really show up when it is a highly detailed model like this. Now we can talk about some of the bad prints I had on this printer. I printed out these rep rack mounts in ASA and they were printed successfully, but with so much warping as they were coming off of the bed, the print quality is really bad. Next up, I printed them with a brim and they did come out a lot better here. These are usable, but it isn't a high quality print. The top surface doesn't look great and the bottom seems too smushed into that first layer. Next up, I printed some multi-board parts. These parts should fit together extremely easily. Multi-board isn't that difficult for most printers to print. Even the simple things like these slots aren't able to fit together and that's a pretty bad situation. Then the slicer updated a few times and I was able to get much better multi-board parts. This box slides right into there just like it's supposed to. The print quality here does show some of those surface artifacts but these are now printing usable functional parts versus what it was printing on the old slicer. And after the latest slicer update, these multi-board snaps that I printed all snap in correctly to the multi-board system and it's all working like it's supposed to. So kind of weird that just a slicer, up, slicer and profile update was all it needed to go from unfunctional to working a lot better. I printed this articulated keychain part to make sure it was able to print these small articulated parts correctly. Accuracy is really important for a 3D printer, and so now it is able to print accurate, accurate articulated models. So while the print quality here has started to improve, it still can't compete with something as cheap as the Bamboo A1 Mini. This was the Bamboo A1 Mini. This was printed by the S1 Pro. That surface finish is way different. On the S1, you can see where the seam is running up the side, and on this one, I can barely tell produces these different surface artifacts depending on what's printed in that layer. These are scuff marks because it was mounted to the wall. They are able to fit together like they're supposed to, but if pure print quality is what you're going for, I would take the A1 Mini over the S1 Pro. Here's the maximum volumetric flow rate test, and it does seem to be maxing out at around 68 to 69 cubic millimeters per second. And this is using their high-speed PLA filament. Since it is a Delta printer, it is important to test the, the X and Y axis calibration, so I printed a simple cylinder. And this does work out to be a perfectly round cylinder all the way around. I have seen some reviews of some printers where if one of the axes isn't working right, you'll print a circle and you'll actually get an oval. This printer with this slicer is printing correctly. One final really large print that I did was this giant vase mode trash can. It is really tall at 380 millimeters tall, it is weird with the build volume of Delta printers. It's a cylinder with kind of a cone on top. It's not a perfect cone, but it still can print very large cylinders. The edges here printed beautifully, really great surface quality, a bit nice and strong and durable, about as durable as I would expect on a vase like this. The bottom did have the wrong slicer settings. It uses a monotonic bottom layer, so all of the layer lines are moving in the same direction. So it's got four layers, but since all the lines are in the same direction, it's not very strong down here. If it had printed them in alternating directions, it would be a lot stronger. I'm thinking some resin I can use down in the bottom here should strengthen it up a lot and be a very useful trash can. So the final question of do I like this printer and who would I recommend it for? I really like this printer, even despite its flaws. A lot of the flaws being the software, the print quality, it doesn't have enough print profiles yet. I think that's something really holding it back compared to a lot of modern printers now. If you get a printer from Bamboo Labs, Creality, Elegoo, Flashforge, it comes with a bunch of print profiles for different nozzle sizes, different speeds and strength ra ratios. So on most printers, if you say, hey, I'm printing ASA, it'll have a really nice profile in there and print beautifully. This one didn't work that way, and I think still needs some of those print profiles tuned in. And the slicer has already been improving. I just hope they continue to improve it and make it a better experience out of the box. The hardware here is printing very quickly and very well, but the software is holding it back from getting great print quality. And that's disappointing on such an expensive machine. The current MSRP of this printer is $1,500, but it's commonly on sale and I will have some affiliate links and 
and discounts in the description down below if you are thinking of picking up a printer like this. This 3D printer really isn't for some hobbyist who just wants good print quality. There are much cheaper machines that do that just fine. This is really a machine for someone who really wants speed, fast prototypes, and is willing to give up a little bit of quality to get a bit more speed. I also think it's for someone who's willing to do some tuning of the printer, because it seems like there is a lot of potential here that's not being fully utilized. A few more print profiles, tuning in some specific exotic filaments would be fine, but it's still not a machine that's recommended that you print carbon fiber with it. So if you need reinforced filaments like that, this really isn't the printer for you. Since this is a printer I'm going to keep around, you can subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my YouTube shorts posting about things I've printed on this printer, since it is improving and I'm sure it's going to continue to get even better. Let me know in the comments if you have any more questions about this machine or something I forgot to cover. I'd love to help you out. But that just about wraps it up. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video. So I'll put this in the bloopers. <laughs> so I don't film on the floor. <laughs>